solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as the trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. Marshall, uh, one of the themes I want to talk about, uh, you know, as you speak about your uh, mission statement, you speak about wanting to help successful people achieve positive, lasting change in behavior for themselves, their yeah. themes. Um, I'm curious about uh, how we get behaviors to stick, changed behaviors to stick. Uh, what can we learn from your wisdom on ensuring that it's not a one-off, but, but follow up. You have to follow up over and over and over again. You have to get measured and basically do it the rest of your life. Mm. Yeah, by the way, Twyla Tharp, I'm glad you asked this question. I'm going to give you a technique now that takes three minutes a day. Cost you nothing. It'll help you get better at almost anything and will stick if you do it. Now, some people are thinking three minutes a day, it costs nothing, help me get better at almost anything. It sounds ridiculous, too good to be true. Half the people start doing this quit in two weeks. We'll see how you do. Two weeks, people quit. It's called a daily question process. Mm -hmm. Okay, get together a spreadsheet on one column, write down a series of questions, represent anything in your life you wanna get better at. Friends, family, health, work, whatever. Every question is answered with yes, no, or number. Seven boxes across, fill it out every day. At the end of the week, you get a report card. I'm gonna warn your listeners in advance, that report card at the end of the week may not be as beautiful as a corporate values plaque you see up on a wall. See, in my glowing introduction, you mentioned a lot of good things about me. One thing you left out, I have an incredible skill you left out. That's the ability to screw something up almost every day. Just screw something up almost every day. Well, you do this process every day, you get to look at it. Now, I have someone call me on the phone every day to make sure I do this, every day. Somebody asked me, well, why do you have someone call you on the phone? Don't you know the theory about how to change behavior? I wrote the theory about how to change behavior. That's why I have someone call me on the phone. My name is Marshall Goldsmith. I got ranked number one coach and leadership thinker in the world for years. I have someone call me on the phone every day just to listen to me, read questions I wrote, provide answers I wrote every day. Why? My name is Marshall Goldsmith. I'm too cowardly and too undisciplined to do any of this stuff by myself. I need help. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay. We all need help. You do what I just told you. You'll get better at almost anything. Let me tell you something. You don't have the guts to do this. You're probably too cowardly and undisciplined as me. You know why we don't do this? It's hard to do. It's incredibly hard to do. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of humility. It takes discipline. It's humbling to look in the mirror every day. Yeah, it's humbling. It's not humbling to talk about values and change and transition and blah, blah, blah. talk, talk, talk. That's not humbling. What's humbling is when some guy asks you, what are you the world's expert at? And you don't, you can't even give him an answer. That's humbling. That's not talk. You see, there's a big gap between talk and live. Talk is easy. Live is hard. Almost all leadership development is talk. Buzzwords. As if somehow better buzzword is going to help people change. Nobody gets better because of buzzwords. You actually have to work. And it's hard. Mm. If it were easy, I would not have someone call me on the phone every day. Now, there's a great book called The Checklist Manifesto, published by Dr. Atul Gawande from Harvard Medical School. If the nurse asks the doctor a series of questions before the surgery, the odds on unneeded infection plummet, and the death rate's cut by two-thirds. The majority of hospitals in the world do not allow the nurse to ask the doctor the questions. And what's the first question? Did you wash your hands? Why? Ego. Why won't the doctor have the nurse ask the question? Ego. They're ashamed. They are ashamed to admit, admit they need help. They're embarrassed to admit they need help. Yet, how do you get people to stick with it? It's hard. It's not easy. They have to work. They have to work over and over. And by the way, it's like getting in shape. You say, well, 
why don't they stay in shape after they get in shape? It's like, once I get in shape, I can quit now. I'll be in shape for eternity. That's not the way it happens. No, you have to keep doing it for life. Hmm. Hmm. And, and is there a point uh, where it moves from getting help from a coach to them sort of doing it themselves? Is that a, is that a year? Uh, well, Twyla Tharps, the world's greatest choreographer, has had the same personal trainer for 27 years. The trainer doesn't teach her anything new. Mm. No. I've, had, I've had somebody call me on the phone every day for probably 30 years. Yeah, you know, you know, Deepak, maybe there is a time when I can get this all by myself and do it on my own. But you know what? I'm 71. haven't quite made it yet. Maybe in the future, though, I will. And I, I, I won't need help in the future, but I'm 71. And you know what? I wouldn't bet on it. Thank yeah, you. right. Yeah, isn't there a time when Deepak won't need any help and he can do everything on his own? If so, you're a way better man than I am. Thank you, Marshall. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Marshall, a related question. Uh, by the way, D Deepak, I got a question. How many of the top 10 tennis players have a coach? All of them, I'm guessing. Why? Why can't they do it on their own? Hmm. Uh, they're number one in the world, you know, why can't you do it on your own? Why do you need a coach? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Pal Gasol is one of the people I've adopted. He's a basketball player. He has a personal trainer live at his house. Wow. So he works out every day while he's trying to get back in shape for the Olympics. Why? He knows the theory. You think he doesn't know the theory after all these years? He's 40 years old. He knows the theory. He's not going to do it by himself. I'm not going to do it by myself. You may be able to do it by yourself. <laughs> I'm not. I can't. I, I need help. I, I need help. And by the way, all those people I coach, hey, they need help. Before I did coaching, people were ashamed to have a coach. Today, I'm proud of my book triggers, 27 major CEOs. I'm CEO of the year in the United States. I need help. I'm number two CEO of the year in the United States. I need help. I'm the president of the World Bank. I need help. I'm the CEO of Pfizer. I need help. Yeah, I won the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I need help. Who are we kidding? We all need help. Mm. Yeah, isn't there going to be a, isn't there going to be a time where you don't need help anymore? Maybe. I say I'm 71. Maybe when I'm 81, I'll figure it all out. <laughs> <laughs> Point well taken, Marshall.